So you just got into skydiving, you're looking to purchase your first rig. I'm sure you got a ton of questions, so here we're gonna answer them today. First things first, we're gonna go over the four main parts that you need in order to pick up a skydiving rig in its entirety. And then after that, we're gonna talk about renting versus buying, both the perks and the cons. Thirdly, we're gonna go over the best way to purchase your own rig, which you should because it adds up quickly and is very expensive if you rent. And then last but not least, we're gonna go over my personal setup of exactly what I jump every single day. I got a question recently in my YouTube comments. I'm gonna throw it up here. They were asking about my gear, so I'm gonna try and give you the best information as possible about exactly what I jump. This way you can get a general idea of what a complete setup looks like for skydiving. So once again, a quick intro. For those of you who do not know, my name is Salvador Chang and this is primarily a skydiving YouTube channel. I wanna go ahead and welcome you to the channel. Go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to join the journey. If you're already subscribed, I love you guys. A long, long time. Thank you, appreciate it. And then once again, I'm shooting this video because I got a question in my comments and I just wanted to give a shout out to this person appreciate you. It was a great comment and a video that I haven't shot before. So if you do have questions for me, go ahead and shoot them in the comments. I read most of my comments and I reply to all of them actually. So go ahead and comment. Um, give me a question and I'll gladly do a video if I can give you the answer. And if I can't give you the answer, I'll find an expert in Deland that can give you the answer because Deland's full of skydiving pros. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the meat of all this, which is gonna be the four main parts to every single skydiving rig. So first things first, you're going to need a container. Um, this is what we're looking at right here, which is basically gonna hold everything together. This is my current setup. I jump a Mirage. It's a thing of beauty. So basically the container is gonna be the outside backpack part that holds everything together. So getting a container is gonna be the first part. Of course, the second part is gonna be getting a main and a reserve. So these are two separate pieces. Once again, the main parachute is gonna be at the bottom. It's gonna be the probably bigger one in most people's cases that you're gonna be jumping and you're gonna be using most of the time. And then the reserve is gonna be tucked away up here. And this is for emergencies only. I have not deployed my reserve yet and I hopefully don't have to. But once again, you're gonna to wanna to get your container first, your main parachute, which is down here and then your reserve parachute, which is tucked away up here for emergencies only. So that's gonna be the three parts there. And then if I go ahead and flip this over, this is gonna be part number four, which I unfortunately do not have, but is gonna be an AAD. So typically they're a little, there'd be a little robot in here that I'd go ahead and press and turn on, which is an AAD. And what an AAD stands for is automatic activation device. So what this is for is basically an emergency is if you get knocked out under canopy and let's say you pass out or something happens to you where you can't deploy your parachute, the AAD will automatically deploy your parachute at a certain altitude. And you can of course set that altitude. So once again, I'm passed out in free fall. I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling. And I can't pull my pilot chute to deploy my main parachute automatically the AAD will fire my reserve, which is my emergency parachute, and then I will land safely, hopefully not as injured as I would have been if obviously nothing deployed. So that's like kind of an insurance for skydivers, which is an AAD. And those are the four parts. So once again, the four parts is gonna be the container, which is gonna hold everything together. You have the main canopy here, the reserve canopy here, and then again, your AAD, which I do not have, but I highly recommend, don't do what I do, get an AAD and be safe. Safety first. All right, now here's the fun part where we're gonna go ahead and talk about how you can get your hands on some gear so you can have some fun. Um, there's gonna be two options. Of course, the first option is gonna be renting and that's probably the first thing you're gonna do. I did that for about my first 50 jumps. At Skydive Deland, they have beautiful rental gear. They have both student and then kind of sport gear, I'd say, which is free fly friendly. That's another thing you wanna look into if you're gonna be doing back flying, sit flying, stand flying, any of that fun stuff, you wanna go ahead and make sure that your gear is free fly friendly of course before so make sure you ask and you understand what you're jumping before you go out and just do some some crazy thing so let's talk about renting gear at skydive the land i believe if you do one single jump and you rent it it's 34 dollars roughly and then if you do an all-day rental where you can jump it as many times as you want i believe it's 75 dollars doing some math once again one jump is 34 dollars plus a jump ticket which is 25 dollars that adds up really quick. And then if you're gonna do an all day rental, that's $75. And then of course, you're gonna wanna jump and an average day of jumping is probably like three or four jumps, which is anywhere from $75 to $100. So on an average day, when I was renting gear, I'd probably, every time I'd go out to skydive the land, I'd spend like $200, which of course hurts your bank account. But at the same time, you get a lot of experience because when you're renting gear, you can demo you can demo different canopies. You can go in and say, hey, I wanna jump the 150 today, Sabre, blah, 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 blah. Or I wanna jump the 170 Storm or whatever. And I'm just naming different canopy brands or types. But once again, you can just demo different things and figure out what you like and what you're comfortable on before you go ahead and buy your own gear. This is probably a good time to 
talk to instructors and get an idea of like where you should be at and your wing loading and then downsizing of course but i wouldn't recommend downsizing anywhere near 50 jumps you definitely want to have a good solid amount of jumps before you even come close to downsizing but once again the perks to renting gear is that you can go ahead and i guess demo different cannabis and then of course the con to renting gear is super expensive and yeah you're going to spend a lot of money every time you go out there so but that's i mean skydiving in general that's the sport that we're in so once again, in the beginning, if I was you, I, I had 50 jumps before I bought my own gear. I was cranking them out, I got my B license and I made sure of that. But if I was you right now, and let's say you just graduated AFF, start putting money away. Even if it's like $25, $50, $100, just start putting money away for your own gear because the second you have your own gear, then you don't have to pay gear rentals, which adds up quickly, trust me. So once again, if I was you and I was a student and I just graduated AFF, I would start saving my money for my own gear as soon as possible. And then speaking of saving money and buying your own gear, the first things I bought, I didn't even buy my container first things first. The first things that I bought was not only a helmet and an Alti, and then I got what they call is a ditter. If we take a look right here, I have the Kiss helmet that I went ahead and purchased. This was my first purchase. And then I went ahead and got this, which is an Alti. It tells you, of course, how high you are in your free fall rate. And then I got a ditter which is gonna be right there. And what a ditter is, for those of you who do not know, is it, it kind of rings in your ear and tells you how high you are, so you kind of don't have to look at your ulti all the time. So it kind of helps when you're in free fall, you can kind of keep locked eyes on the group and then understand how high you are by just hearing it and listening to it. And that's probably what you guys hear a lot of the times in my videos when I'm pulling, you can hear it kind of ringing off. That's my ditter. So once again, those are the first things that I would buy straight out of AFF. I'd buy a helmet, I'd buy an Alti, and I'd buy a Ditter, and then I'd start saving for my own rig, my own personal rig. This way you don't have to pay rentals anymore because once again, it does add up very quickly. Okay, so point number three, here we are. Let's say you went ahead and saved up a bunch of money. You have a helmet, you have an altimeter, you have a Ditter. What's your next step? So moving forward, you're gonna wanna buy used gear. Me personally, I would never recommend anybody, especially for their first rig, to go out and buy a brand new setup. That just doesn't make sense because you're gonna get it dirty, you're gonna damage it, you're gonna mess it up. Your landings are not gonna be perfect every single time. I would buy something used to help you get into the sport to understand exactly what you like. And then moving forward, by the time you go to buy your new container or a couple years down the line, you're gonna have so much knowledge in that year or two or three years of you jumping and more experience that you're gonna, it's just gonna be a wiser choice when buying a new container but once again i think personally moving forward i think i'm gonna buy all my gear used you'll realize that people are always progressing and moving forward and they're always levels ahead of you and that when they're moving forward of course somebody needs to buy that gear some i mean it's just going to be sitting there nobody's going to be using it so if you walk up and you say hey can i purchase your gear i understand you have two rigs now i want to buy your old one i mean opportunities there so i guess that's a perfect segue in how to buy your first used rig so let's go ahead and get into that. So there's a couple different options in buying your first rig. I would say get used, of course, but the way to go about that is, first things first, there's a bunch of Facebook forums and a bunch of like websites that you can go to. I personally went to dropzone.com and that's where I picked up my rig. I'm gonna go ahead and throw up some emails right here. This is how I found my first person. I was on dropzone.com. Uh, I saw an ad and I, it's basically like Craigslist, but for skydiving and rigging and a bunch of stuff like that. Any gear that you need basically is like the Craigslist for skydivers. So I went ahead and I went on there. I found a rig, uh, I contacted the person, and then fortunately, I reached out, everything was legit, and I sent them money and they sent me my rig, which is super sketchy, and that's a whole other story, and we can go into that. But here are just some photos. I basically received my rig in a box from Bryce, from California. Shout out to Bryce, I appreciate you, big dog. Thanks for that. But yeah, so you can get it online on Facebook forums or websites. I personally got it from dropzone.com, but once again, to each his own, do what you need to do. There's a million websites out there you can check where people are selling used skydive gear and uh, basically rigs. And then of course, you can talk to people at your local DZ. I would go face to face or make like a poster board and see if you can paste it up somewhere and be like, hey, this is what I'm looking for. I'm looking to purchase my first rig. This is how much money I have. That's another thing. Don't waste people's time unless you have the money in hand because money talks and BS walks. Honestly, I didn't make any of these moves until I had at least three grand in my pocket that I was willing to spend on a brand new rig and that was my limit. And then I went had it and started searching and I got once again the deal of a lifetime because I found everything except minus an AAD but everything for two grand so I'm telling you if you have money in hand and you're patient you can get a used rig for under three grand that's in decent shape like I love my per like look at my baby I love my rig honestly and I'm I wouldn't like I've had people come up to me and try to offer me $3,500 for it and I'm just not ready to sell it yet 
But yeah, don't waste people's time, have money in hand, and then talk to people in person, uh, make flyers, do what you need to do, just like get out there, and if you're looking for a rig, trust me, the universe is weird, it'll find you at the right time, at the right price point. And then another note, when you are ready to go ahead and purchase your rig, let's say you find the rig of your dreams, you have the money in hand, and you're talking to the person, ask that person, and this is a key step, ask that person if they're willing to go ahead and send the rig, to a rigger for a rigger's inspection. And then once again, if you get the rig and the rigger looks over it and they say, okay, it's good to go, or they give you like, hey, this is some things you might wanna look at, it might need relines or whatever the case may be, there might be damage, then you can kind of negotiate the price depending on that, or you could just walk away from the deal completely. So if I was you, when buying your first rig, first off, find it, first off, have the money for it, and then once you do all that and you kind of talk to the person, see if they're willing to send it over to a certified rigger. This way your rigger can check over it and make sure it's legit, and then you're not getting kind of ripped off in a sense. At least that's what I would do, just looking out. And then just a general idea before you go ahead and contact your rigger, I'm looking at my notes right now. Um, a couple things you wanna look at is the age of the container and the age of the canopy and the reserve. Um, typically, I don't remember 100%, but it's either if she's 18 or 21 or older, you don't wanna kinda mess with it. Once again, if it's over the years of 18 or 21, just stay away from it in general. Um, you wanna ask how many jumps it has, both on the main and the reserve, and then you wanna go ahead and see when the AAD expires, because that is a thing. I, when I first bought it, I bought mine, as you'll see here, it had an AAD, but it was expired, so they took it out, there's real no point in having it. And then, of course, like I said, send it to a rigger and make sure it gets inspected, this way you can get a proper price point for it. All right, and then last but not least, I know this was a long video, but I tried to pack as much information in it as possible. This way you can be prepared when you're buying your first rig. Once again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, go ahead and comment them in the bottom and I'll answer them because I'm sure I've missed stuff. There's so much here. Back to the point, this is gonna be the last one, number four, and I'm gonna go ahead and talk about what I jump personally. So once again, I have my Mirage container. Um, this is Bryce's old container. Shout out to Bryce from California. Love you, big dog. Uh, I have my main, which is an Aerodyne 170. I have my reserve in here, which I have never deployed, and it came with an AED, but once again, it was expired, so I had to take it out. Beep, boop, bop, beep, little robot should be in there, but it's not. Um, safety first, kids, get an AED. And then for my helmet setup, I have the KISS. I run the Max up top, GoPro Max, as you've seen in my videos, I'm sure in the past. I have the Ditter here, which is the Solo 2, and then I have the VMAG mount up front, and this is for my GoPro 9, which I'm shooting with right now, but basically I can hook up my camera here and then I can kind of handheld it or I can go ahead and attach it and it hasn't came off yet, which I'm extremely grateful for because I've done some pretty insane jumps and I'm pretty reckless about my life. Okay, so, and then this is my Alti. Um, yep, Alti 2. Nothing too crazy. Here's just a buff from PD. I usually tie my hair up with this so it doesn't get in my face in my whole setup. This is basically my setup. This is what we're looking at. Once again, my Alti, Alti 2. I use a buff because my hair is long and I'm a wild man. Tarzan, this is the VMAG mount for the GoPro. This is the GoPro Max. This is the KISS helmet. I have my Ditter here. And once again, my main setup. The Mirage from Bryce from California with my main reserve and a little robot AAD. All right, so I hope that answered all you guys' questions. That was once again, a very long video. Thank you guys for uh, sticking in and I hope it helped you guys out. I hope you took something away from it. I hope you get your first ring and I hope it's at an amazing price point and I hope you get the deal of your life as I did. Once again, just be patient, have the money in hand and don't be afraid to negotiate because at the end of the day, it's your money. You worked hard for it. Once again, love you guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I hope you took something away from this video. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. I love you guys. Check out the hit list, by the way. If you're not sure what the hit list is, this is gonna be 30 jumps that we're gonna go ahead and do. This is a series that I'm doing currently right now. You can go ahead and check out that playlist here. But yeah, I uh, love you guys. I hope you guys took something away from that video. I'm kind of ranting at this point. I had a little too much coffee this morning. Love you guys. Cheers.